Hello, my name is Jennifer Loftus, and I'm the patient care manager of the inpatient orthopedics unit here at Mount Sinai West. On behalf of the entire treatment team, I would like to welcome you to Mount Sinai West, as well as thank you for choosing our esteemed providers for your joint replacement surgery. Together with your doctor, our interdisciplinary treatment team will get you up and running the same day after surgery and home possibly the same day as your surgery or by 12 o'clock the day after your surgery. We're dedicated to providing you with exceptional service and a great patient experience. So if you need anything during your hospital stay, please feel free to reach out to myself, Jennifer, or a member of our treatment team. Thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you soon. Hi, I'm Alana. And I'm Lindsay, and we're physician assistants with the orthopedic team at Mount Sinai West Hospital. And we're gonna walk you through on how to prepare and what to expect for your upcoming surgery here at Mount Sinai West Hospital. Welcome to Mount Sinai West Hospital. Thank you for choosing our institution to have your surgery. We want your experience to be as pleasant as possible and we'll do everything we can to ensure this happens. In preparation for your surgery, we ask you to stop the following one week prior to surgery. Anti-inflammatories, including Advil, Meloxicam, Celebrex, or any NSAID, all vitamins, all herbal or natural supplements. Please refer to your primary care physician regarding all other medications. Some medications are permitted the morning of surgery, while others are not. We will instruct you on which of your heart blood pressure, diabetes, or asthma medications you can take and which ones you cannot take. The day before surgery, a nurse will contact you to review your list of medications and advise you on which medications to continue the morning of surgery and which medications to not take. You will obtain medical clearance from your PCP or cardiologist within 30 days of your surgery date. This clearance will include blood work and EKG chest x-ray if necessary, and a letter of medical clearance from your doctor. Welcome to joint class. This class is designed for patients undergoing a joint replacement surgery and are being discharged the same day as surgery. Joint class is divided into two parts. During this video, you will hear from a few of our orthopedic unit staff members who will go through what to expect during your hospital stay. The video will highlight physical therapy education, social work education, and nutrition education. You will also have a one-on-one -on -one individual session with a provider. During this session, we will review your medical clearance, medical history, and answer any questions or concerns you may have. Five days prior to surgery, as well as the day of surgery, please use HIPAA cleanse to wash the extremity that will be operated on. This is an antiseptic wash that will be used in the shower after you wash your body with regular soap. Apply a teaspoon and a half on a washcloth and scrub the operative site. If you are not already given the wash by your surgeon's office, you may purchase this over the counter or arrange picking up the wash at your surgeon's office. Please refrain from using lotions in the days leading up to surgery and please refrain from shaving the extremity one week prior to surgery. For at least 72 hours prior to surgery, do not smoke, drink alcohol, or use recreational drugs. These may interfere with the anesthesia medications. If you develop a cold, virus, sore throat, or other illness during the week before your scheduled surgery, please contact your surgeon's office. It will be determined whether your procedure should be rescheduled. Things to bring the day of surgery. You should wear comfortable, loose clothing and supportive shoes or sneakers. Bring a government-issued photo ID, insurance card, and prescription card. A list of medications you are currently taking. A credit card for co-pays for discharge medications. Durable medical equipment or transportation. A cell phone and your cell phone charger. And the telephone number of the person escorting you home the day of surgery. On the day of surgery, do not wear contact lenses or body jewelry. You may wear eyeglasses, hearing aids, or dentures. However, these must be removed prior to the surgery. Please bring your containers in which you store these items. 
do not bring any valuables or, or jewelry. On the evening before surgery, we will contact you to let you know the time to arrive for your surgery and the exact address you will enter the hospital. These are the guidelines for eating and drinking prior to surgery. Eight hours prior to surgery, stop eating all solid foods, but you can continue to drink clear liquid. The morning of surgery, we strongly encourage you to drink 16 ounces of clear liquid prior to leaving for the hospital. This includes water, Gatorade, but no red color, black coffee or black tea, but no milk or creamer of any kind. Avoid drinking milk, alcohol, or drinks with pulp, such as orange juice. Your case may be canceled if you do not follow the above instructions. It is very important to arrive on time to the hospital. You will be directed to ambulatory surgery as discussed during the pre-op phone call. Before surgery, you will be given a hospital gown to wear. You will have a hospital ID bracelet put on your wrist. For your safety, you will be asked to verify your name and date of birth multiple times on the day of surgery. We want to ensure you are the correct patient getting the correct procedure. The morning of surgery, you will meet a member of the orthopedic and anesthesia team. You will have time to discuss any questions or concerns. You will sign consent forms. Your operative site will be marked by the orthopedic team. The anesthesiologist will meet with you prior to surgery to discuss your anesthesia and answer any questions you may have. An IV will be placed in your arm, which will allow medications to be given to you so that you are comfortable throughout the procedure. If you have had any experiences in the past with anesthesia, please inform the anesthesiologist. It is important that we have as much information as possible to provide the best anesthesia care for you. In the holding area prior to surgery, you will be given a one-time therapeutic dose of an iodine-based medication to get rid of MRSA or MSSA that lingers in the nose. If you have an allergy to iodine, you would have been prescribed Bactroban preoperatively to apply in your nostrils twice a day for five days before surgery. After the surgery, you will be taken to the PACU or the post-anesthesia care unit, a unit where you will be closely monitored. You will notice a bandage and ice pack on your operative site. You will be evaluated by a physical therapist in the recovery room. You will be asked to rate the severity of your pain using a pain scale. There is no right or wrong answer. Just rate your pain as best you can to give us an idea of how close we are to making you comfortable. You will be asked frequently about your pain. You will be given several types of pain medication on demand and scheduled. Please advise the nurse if the pain is not improving. Ice packs will be placed to help with pain and decrease inflammation. Always tell your doctor, nurse, or other staff member when you are having pain. Don't be afraid to ask for pain medication. Methods to assist with pain relief include relaxation techniques, rest, deep breathing exercises, and proper positioning in bed. A few hours after surgery, your therapist will see you in the recovery room and prepare you to go home. Physical therapy will review with you the exercises you should continue at home. If you have stairs at home, your therapist will practice stairs with you prior to discharge. A social worker will be assigned to your case after surgery. Social work will send a referral to an accepting home care agency. You can expect a call from your home care agency 24 to 48 hours after discharge to set up a time to begin home physical therapy. Home PT will continue for approximately two weeks. Some patients may be suited for outpatient therapy immediately following discharge if cleared by your surgeon's team. So how do we prevent blood clots after surgery? The most important way to prevent blood clots is to walk every day. You will be discharged on an oral anticoagulant to keep your blood thin. Most commonly, you will be given aspirin. Other examples include Xeralto or Eliquis. Antibiotics will be given to you throughout your procedure through an IV as a preventative measure to prevent infection. If you have diabetes, it is important to keep your blood sugar under control. It is important to prevent joint stiffness. We have a few weeks to get this joint moving. 
If you are undergoing a knee replacement, it is important to begin bending and straightening your knee immediately after surgery. This will be done initially under the guidance of the physical therapist. You will need to do this upon discharge multiple times a day on your own. What to expect upon discharge? It is necessary to have someone accompany you home day of surgery. Your medications will be sent to your pharmacy prior to surgery. These will include pain medication, blood thinner such as aspirin, stool softener, and any other medications determined by your surgeon. You may receive durable medical equipment or prescriptions for them. This will be discussed prior to discharge if you need any additional equipment to aid in your recovery at home. You will receive from the nursing staff and orthopedic team detailed instructions for continuation of your medications, wound care, exercises, and follow-up care. We also offer flu and pneumococcal vaccinations. Special equipment after surgery. You will be discharged home with a walker. We recommend patients getting a hip kit prior to surgery to aid in recovery at home. This kit includes a sock aid, dressing stick, reacher, shoehorn, and elastic shoelaces. Please check with your insurance regarding coverage. After you are discharged home from the hospital, you will receive a follow-up call from the orthopedic team the next day checking in on your home recovery. Make sure to call your orthopedic surgeon to make a follow-up appointment a few weeks after your surgery. Continue taking the oral anticoagulant prescribed Continue doing your home exercises advised by your therapist. If you have any concerns while at home, please call your doctor's office or home care agency. For an emergency, please call 911. Our hope is for you to continue living a healthy lifestyle, continue to exercise and walk daily, maintain a healthy weight, be mindful of your daily nutrition. If you haven't done so already, we strongly encourage smoking cessation. Our goal is for you to have a safe and positive experience while at Mount Sinai West Hospital. We encourage you to push yourself as much as you can. We'll give you all the tools and assistance while you are with us to make your orthopedic surgery a huge success. Please remember to walk every day. Hello, my name is Paul McNamara and I am a physical therapist here at Mount Sinai West with the Department of Rehabilitation and Human Performance. Hello, my name is Reagan McCraney and I'm an occupational therapist here at Mount Sinai West. Your rehabilitation team after surgery may include your physical therapist, occupational therapist, and orthopedic physician assistants. The team will see you in the recovery room within one to three hours after you arrive and as needed throughout your stay until discharge. In the recovery room, we will work to get you in and out of bed, walking around the bedside with a rolling walker. We will go up and down stairs if necessary. We will show you some exercises lying in the bed and seated at the edge of the bed. And the team will discuss any equipment needs and provide equipment at bedside as needed for discharge. Our rehabilitation goals as a team for you in the recovery room are that you can get yourself in and out of bed, you can walk safely, with a rolling walker or another assistive device. We will make sure that you can go up and down stairs if necessary. We will make sure you have an understanding of your basic home exercises and any movements that we encourage or that should be avoided. There's exercises found in the binder and we want you to perform them three times a day while in the hospital and continue with them upon discharge. After your surgery, you may require some equipment, such as a walker, cane, commode, transfer tub bench, and or tools for dressing. A PT or OT can give you a call prior to your surgery to discuss possible DME needs. Some equipment can be covered by your insurance while others is not. We have house vendors for some of the equipment. Other equipment may be purchased from your local surgical supply store or online vendors like Amazon. Seen here are some of the adaptive equipments used for dressing, particularly if you have a posterior hip surgery. Bathroom equipment can include a commode, transfer tub bench, shower chair, raised toilet seat. A PT or OT will contact you ahead of time to discuss what your possible bathroom needs are. 
Please be advised that if any equipment was ordered to be delivered home, either pre- or post-operatively, it is your responsibility to follow up with the vendor to provide any payment and or delivery information. Failure to do so may result in delay or cancellation of your order. Your PTOT team will provide you with the vendor information. At your time of discharge, please plan on having someone to accompany you home. Having a pair of loose rubber-soled shoes to wear at home will be good. Firm chairs with armrests are easier to get up from. If you are going to sit on a lower couch or chair, you may need to add pillows to elevate it. You want to make sure to clear clutter and throw rugs from your main paths in the house. Be careful with pets and be careful when walking on different surfaces. It can be helpful to prepare meals ahead of time, prepare for having groceries delivered, organize your kitchen so that items can be easily reached. In your bedroom, you want to make sure to tape down or remove cords from your walkways, ensuring you have a clear pathway into and out of the bedroom. Organize your clothes to make them easier to reach. In the bathroom, make sure that your shelves are organized as well, making all your frequently used items easily accessible. Make sure your bathroom doorway has clear access. Safety with lower body dressing. Please take caution when placing feet into or out of pants and undergarments. All lower body dressing should be performed from a seated position as you heal from surgery. Only stand to pull up or down garments between knee and waist level. It is your responsibility to do your best when the PT and OT comes to work with you. Remember to try and perform your exercises at least three times a day once you get home. We want your surgery to be a success and your recovery to go as smoothly as possible. Thank you for choosing Mount Sinai West for your joint replacement. Hi there, my name is Michal Sokolowski. I'm a senior physical therapist here at Mount Sinai West. So after your total joint replacement surgery, um, the best thing you can do is to ambulate, change positions throughout the day as much as possible. Um, the worst thing you can do is stay in one position in bed all day. Uh, it puts you at risk of a lot of complications. So taking little walks to the kitchen, to the bathroom, uh, doing as much on your own as possible um, is the most important. In your discharge paperwork, you will get a set of basic exercises um, to do at home. Uh, you will also go over them in your joint class. I suggest that you go through them already so you're comfortable doing them at home before you even have the surgery. It's a lot easier to tap into that muscle memory to do the exercises uh, than to learn a new exercise when you arrive in the hospital. So the first exercise is very simple. Uh, it's called a quad set. Uh, for all these exercises, um, the uh, frequency is uh, listed on the handout. It's three sets of 10 three times a day. So we're shooting for about 90 repetitions per day. Um, especially after a new replacement, you might want to space those exercises more frequently. So maybe a set of 10 every hour just to keep that knee nice and loose. So the first one, you're going to work on knee extension in bed, uh, laying flat. So you're going to press straight down into the bed, contract the quadriceps muscle, maintain that contraction for five seconds, and then just relax it. And that counts as one repetition. So we're shooting for 10 of those. Very simple exercise, um, just gets that knee into full extension in supine. The second exercise, now we're focusing on knee flexion. So you're going to slide your heel towards you as far as you can. There you go, cat has beautiful range of motion. You will not have that range of motion after surgery, but we are um, aiming to stretch that knee. So you can extend it back down, slide it back. Uh, this might be difficult after surgery just because of pain and swelling. Um, still very important to push through that pain and swelling to get that new range of motion. So what you can do is you can use your hands on your thigh to help pull that leg towards you to get more of that stretch. Or an alternate method is you can, if you have a strap at home, you can use a strap. If you don't, a rolled up sheet works just fine. You can hook that sheet under your foot and just use your hands to pull that leg towards you. Perfect. All right. Perfect. 
The next exercise is called a straight leg raise, SLR for short. So you can bend the opposite leg just to uh, relieve some pressure on your back. And then you want to raise your leg straight up. And again, cat has great flexibility. You can go to about the height of the knee on the other hand. And that will be great. That's a very difficult exercise to do after a knee replacement. Should be a little bit easier after a hip replacement, but still a challenge. Again, you can use that rolled up sheet to help pull it up. Perfect. The next one is a terminal knee extension. So you can have a rolled up sheet or a rolled up pillow underneath that knee. Right? So you see how that knee now is in a little bit of flexion. Uh, here, a note of caution, this position does feel great after a knee replacement. Do not leave that pillow under the knee. You want that knee nice and straight when it's in bed, and the physical therapist here will definitely stress that when they see you. Um, but for the exercise, you're just straightening the knee. There you go. Nice and slow, and then back down. Perfect. Okay. The most basic exercise after a surgery, it prevents, um, helps prevent blood clots and diminish swelling. It's called ankle pumps. This you can do on both legs, just full plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. So moving your ankles up and down, nice and slow. And those you can do if you're watching TV, every commercial break. Um, again, the recommendation in the handout is three sets of 10, three times a day. But these, I, I highly recommend that you do more frequently throughout the day. And you can do those laying down or sitting up. OK, and the final one, you can sit up. Again, this exercise is predominantly for knee replacement patients, but you can do those after a hip replacement as well. We're going to work on that knee extension and flexion again. So this is for extension. nice and slow, try to not rely on the momentum. And again, after a new replacement, this exercise will be very difficult to complete. And you can mo modify it with either a strap or a rolled up sheet, just to again, stretch that knee, make sure that that scar tissue is not forming in a way that it restricts your range of motion. Very nice, so that's for extension. If you scoot forward, then you can focus on flexion and sliding that heel under you, forward and back as far as you can. And again, Kat has full range of motion, so this is a lot easier for her than somebody after a total joint replacement. And you can use the other leg to actually push the leg forward and back as well. Um, it's a lot easier if you have some back support for that one, for the modification. Again, the physical therapist will go over all these exercises with you when you're here after your surgery. And if you have any questions about them still, make sure to ask either a PT or an OT. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Emily Sherlock and I'm a social work manager at Mount Sinai West. After your surgery, a social worker will work with you, your family, your doctors, and your therapists to formulate and execute a personalized discharge plan. There are daily rounds where your team will meet to discuss your progress, needs, and concerns. Once we have formulated a discharge plan, a social worker will facilitate any recommended services for discharge. If you are recommended for home care services upon discharge, including home PT, nursing, or occupational therapy, a social worker will review these services with you. You will be provided a list of certified home health agencies and a social worker will refer you to an agency in your area to determine if they can accept your insurance. The provision of these services is dependent on the agency's staffing availability and locating an agency that accepts your insurance. If your case is accepted for home care services, they will begin 24 to 48 hours after the agency confirms its availability. Once services are confirmed by the home care agency, a physical therapist will come to your home between three and five days a week. 
Complete duration of therapy is between one to three weeks post-surgery. Most patients have about two weeks of in-home therapy. The goal of intensive therapy is to get you back to your normal life in your home faster. The following are not usually covered by your insurance, although we are able to arrange these services if needed. Transportation from the hospital to home, in some instances transportation to the rehab center, or private nursing home attendant care. Each insurance plan is different and we are happy to explore your individual plans allowances with you post-surgery. And finally, we want you to get back to your old or new self quickly, safely, and comfortably. We are here to help, so please let your social worker know if you have any questions regarding the discharge plan. If you have any questions for social work prior to your surgery, please inform your orthopedic team and they'll schedule you for a phone call with a social worker. While it is our mission at Mount Sinai West to connect patients with the most convenient and dedicated certified home health agencies in the five boroughs, we have recently seen a decrease in availability of home physical therapists and less insurance coverage of post-op physical therapy in the home. Our institution is rallying behind the trend to go directly to outpatient physical therapy and not waste any time at all beginning the road to recovery. At the time you were booked for surgery, your surgeon may have provided you with an outpatient physical therapy referral in preparation for this transition. If not, please notify us and we will provide you with a script. We encourage you to take time prior to surgery to look for an outpatient physical therapy facility in your local community. Please reach out to the facility regarding insurance coverage. Thank you so much for your understanding. Hi, my name is Elise. I'm one of the dietitians here at Mount Sinai West, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about some strategies to optimize your nutrition both before and after your surgery to get you back on your feet as soon as possible. So first we're going to talk about some strategies to get your body ready for the surgery from a nutrition perspective. Um, it's going to be really important that we are fueling your body properly to prep in advance of the stress that the procedure is going to put on your body. It's going to be important to include protein one to two weeks before your surgery, um, making sure that you are including a protein at every meal and snack. So that can be from an animal source such as meat, uh, eggs, chicken, poultry, fish, or it can also come from our plant-based so sources such as tofu, uh, nuts and seeds, as well as beans. It's really important to include protein because protein does provide building blocks for muscles, bones, and it does also strengthen your immune system by promoting the production of antibodies. Protein's gonna allow you to be as strong as possible going into surgery. We do also wanna make sure that you are stocking up on your fruits and vegetables prior to surgery. Our fruits and vegetables are a great source of various vitamins and minerals, including vitamin C, vitamin K, iron, and magnesium that are all going to be helpful um, both prior to and following your surgery. And vegetables and fruits also help to support a healthy immune system, promote regular blood sugar levels, and reduce overall inflammation. Typically, the darker the vegetable or fruit, the more nutrient dense it's going to be. Another thing that's going to be really important preoperatively is going to be adequate hydration. Uh, studies have shown that patients who are well hydrated prior to their procedure report overall less pain and nausea following the surgery. So we want to make sure that you're drinking at least eight eight ounce glasses of water per day. And we do want to try to limit our consumption of foods that are going to cause increased stress on the body, such as sugar, alcohol, and caffeine. Uh, it's not to say that you can't have any, but we do want to make sure that we are trying to limit any excess stress that, and inflammation that can be put on the body prior to your procedure. This is also very important for our diabetic patients. We want to make sure that you're reducing any intake of uh, sugar sweetened beverages and excess sugar intake to help promote blood sugar control and reduce the risk of inflammation, infection, and uh, increase wound healing following your procedure. So after your procedure, uh, we want to make sure that we are fueling your body to get you back on your feet as quickly as you can. Nutrition is going to be a really important part of that. Um, so again, we're going to talk about some components that can help you get on your feet as quickly as possible. Protein, once again, is going to be really important. 
as we discussed, it promotes wound healing. It also helps to repair the damaged body tissues and keep your immune system strong. And it's gonna come from those sources that we previously discussed, both animal and plant-based proteins. Vitamin C is also really important in the post-operative stage as it helps to heal wounds as well as form collagen in bone, muscle, and skin. Um, you can find this in a variety of fruits and vegetables, but primarily vitamin C is gonna be found in those citrus fruits as well as strawberries, kiwi, uh, potatoes, peppers, broccoli, and kale. Vitamin A is also really important during this stage because it helps with skin healing, cell growth, and it does also support the immune system. Uh, vitamin A is typically found in our orange fruits and vegetables, as well as our dark leafy greens, such as kale and spinach. Um, zinc is also really important for wound healing. You're gonna find that primarily in fortified dairy products and cereals, as well as lean red meats, sesame, and pumpkin. Vitamin D and calcium are gonna be both really helpful for maintaining our bone strength, um, and calcium specifically is also important for activating many enzymes throughout the body and contributes to blood clotting, which are important in the post-operative phase. In order to make sure we're getting enough calcium and vitamin D, we wanna to look to our milk sources as well as calcium-fortified juices, cereals, and dairy products. Um, Vitamin D specifically can also be found in egg yolks, salmon, and sunlight, and calcium can be found in those dark leafy vegetables, especially broccoli. Another food component we wanna highlight in the post-operative phase is omega-3 fatty acids. These are gonna be really important for preventing or helping to eliminate excess inflammation. Um, they can be found in our plant oils, such as flaxseed oil, as well as avocado, fatty fish, nuts, and green vegetables. One of the most common complications following surgery can be decreased appetite. It's very common in the post-operative phase, but that does not mean that our body does not need increased calories and protein. As a result, we wanna make sure that if you are finding it difficult to eat your baseline portions of food, that we are utilizing some strategies to help combat that. Transitioning from three big meals a day to five to six small meals a day can be a strategy to help increase your overall intake of calories and protein, and including high calorie, low volume foods such as avocado, olive oil, dairy products, and nuts and seeds can also be very helpful when trying to increase your overall calorie and protein intake and pack a punch in each bite that you're eating. Another strategy to help combat decreased appetite is to drink your calories. So that can either be from a smoothie made at home that includes maybe your favorite nut butter, a fruit, vegetable, protein powder, as well as your milk of choice. And you can also find this in your pre-made nutrition drinks that you can find at a local drugstore such as Ensure or Boost. Another strategy that can be helpful is working with a dietitian, both or either in or out of the hospital um, on some ways that you can optimize your nutrition post-operatively. Constipation is another concern that comes up in the post-operative phase as a result of decreased movement and some of the pain medications which are known to be constipating. Uh, in order to combat that, we wanna make sure that you continue to stay adequately hydrated, um, drinking at least two liters of fluid a day, and we also wanna make sure that you're including those high fiber foods at each meal. So that would come from your fruits, your vegetables, and your whole grains, which will also help to get you your vitamin and mineral requirements. Fiber, um, especially our insoluble fiber found in our in our nuts and seeds, as well as fruits with the skin on and our leafy greens are gonna be really helpful for uh, maintaining normal bowel function. So those are some of the things we're gonna to wanna to include on a daily basis. And this is just highlighting a lot of the topics that we had discussed. We wanna make sure that, again, you are staying adequately hydrated prior to your procedure and that you're making sure that you're including a lot of fruits and vegetables that have both that fiber, vitamin, and mineral component to them. 
We want to make sure that you are eating enough in the post-operative phase and meeting those increased calorie and protein needs through smaller, more frequent meals, as well as protein-packed snacks. We do also want to make sure you're avoiding any excess stress on the body by continuing to limit our consumption of excess sugar, processed foods, and alcohol. And if you do find that you have any questions or you're concerned that your appetite has remained low in the post-operative phase, feel free to reach out to a dietitian to help. Thank you.